much. Let's see. Uh, Twitch. Make sure I'm on. And let's see here. All right. Uh, okay. So control N. Hey, Ox, thanks for showing up. Um, I got nothing in particular I want to go over. I went and looked at the streaming topics and there's nothing I really need to cover. So if you have any guys that have any questions, people have any questions, let me know. Um, in the meantime, I can go through my streaming here and see if I can't find... Uh, where did we leave off on this thing? Maybe I can get some stuff done real quick. Let's see if there's anything easy I can pull out here. And we can just do a pass on it. So we've got these here. These are going to be placeholder for my hoses. If you watched uh, last time stream, I guess I could go ahead and pull up my links here. YouTube and streaming for Pixlogic. If you go on my workshop page, um, we went over the tube, curve tube helper. Whoops. Um, hold on. Okay, apparently I need to log into Twitch again. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's see. There we go. Okay. I think I'm back on chat. Sorry, I deleted all my chat, so if you said something. Oh, wow, you watched everything? And you you probably know more ZBrush than I do at this point because I tend to forget things that I've worked on, <laughs> uh, and and also techniques. There's been a couple times where I have forgotten how to do things. Let's see. Uh, we can just do some basic Z modeling. I think I've got some really basic shapes back here, so maybe we can add some visual interest here. So I'm going to Alt Paint on these things, then we'll do maybe an inset polygroup all region. We'll go ahead and. That will or inset this, we'll inset this, and then I'm going to do a Q mesh polygroup all here. We can kind of push this in maybe a little bit. Um, on these ones, I'm going to drop my crease tolerance way down so I can grab all those corners. Um, these are usually the, the trouble corners here, and we can also do a crease level like three. Let's move some to a four. Actually, let's do an uncrease all. Let's say, I guess that'll work for now. This corner's bothering my here, so I'll do. Um, Shift D and go ahead. Let's see. Preferences. Edit. Turn off a line cursor to surface. And we'll go ahead and move this out here. There we go. These shapes aren't aren't very well constructed. I'm trying to remember why I made them like this, unless this is like a weird theory measure. Might it might behoove me to actually remake this shape again. As opposed to just keeping that one. Um King's Letter says, dude, I did traditional shoulder. I watch your how to sculpt a boot change my life. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, if you, um, anybody new, you can go to my YouTube channel. Actually, ArtStation on that one is probably the better bet. It's got YouTube and it's also got a breakdown. So if I go over here to my profile, I've got my ArtStation page, and there is, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about this boot tutorial here. And surprisingly, we maybe we can do some of this. Maybe not a boot, but we can do something clothing related or like a pouch or a pack or a backpack or something because you'd be surprised how much box modeling is involved just making clothing stuff it's not like when i do clothing it's really more about the form and then at the very end you put in a little wrinkles and a little details and little stitches and call it a day but up till that point um, it's actually pretty a lot of modeling which is which is cool there's nothing wrong with that cool hey craig kelly thanks for showing up um cool so uh and there's also some probably some newer techniques i'm always learning so there's always like little shortcuts and stuff that i'm finding out every day if you guys don't watch on a pixel youtube channel the um ask zbrush series um some of them i know but some of them are uh, really really useful are a different way to kind of look at things 
Um, you know what? I am going to remodel it. So really quickly, I'm just going to go in here. I'm just going to grab a cube. And I'm going to drag this cube out here. And I'm just going to match this up. So I'm going to split mass points. I just want to work on these two subtools here. So I'm going to hold down shift. And we'll go ahead and just start remaking the shape. This is like kind of a sloppy shape. I guess I resurfaced it for some reason. And it just, it's not really doing it for me. So I'm going to turn on LSIM here. And we're going to scale this up and move this in like so. And then we can kind of get the overall shape on the back end here. Now, if I want to reposition this uh, gizmo here so we can put it on the back and then kind of start modeling this part out over here, I can hit W, Alt, and that'll find the surface normal and that surface, uh, surface direction. And then also the pivot point so I can scale back here and make it correct. Um, the easier part what I tend to find is if I go through here and I'm just trying to make a shape, I can get rid of these end caps temporarily. So I can go here and like delete a single poly. I can delete those out. <clears throat> and then it's a little bit easier to go through here and like bevel these things out. I don't have to bevel those. I can uh, put in just cut lines if I want to not do that. For example, I can go through here and I can do insert single edge loop. So I can put one here and then I can go here and I can say mask edge, I can mask this edge and mask this edge, control tap to invert that mask, hit W, hold down alt, go to smash mesh center, and then I can just kind of pull these things in like that. Um, so now I have a much cleaner, better, more consistent shape. I don't really need this anymore. That's just kind of placeholder, I suppose. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I always want to look at these things in context. I'm going to hold down shift and turn everything else back on and make sure that this thing is fitting uh, where I want to. So it looks like this little back piece back here needs to be cut in. So let's make sure that's selected. I'm going to do another insert single edge loop here and I'm going to slide. Let's see if we can slide this edge. We can slide it in this way and maybe even slide it down this direction to kind of round that corner out in a more consistent way. That's a little bit better. So now we can go through here. We can even start creasing if we want to. So I'm going to drop that, drop another crease in there. And now we can see how that plays out much nicer. And I can always go in here and use my move brush and just kind of pull these verts around, but I'll leave that alone for now. So we'll do shift D and now we can go through here. If we want to add some visual interest, we can go inset polygroup all with a region inset that twice. I like to inset things twice. I find that if I Q mesh straight back, um, it's okay. Uh, things tend to look a little bit rigid. So if I do in two insets, and then I do a Q mesh polygroup ball. And then I just hold down shift as I move and push that back. And then now I can go through here and do another crease. And then these are the little trouble areas in here. So I'll crease this edge here and here. There we go. And I got my basic shape a lot nicer. And then I can go through here and I can, um, also I can use deformers if I want to do a little bit more uh, broad overall changes. Like if I want to taper this back end a little bit, I can, um, first I'm going to go out of X symmetry and I'm just going to delete this half. We'll work on one half here. I'm going to hit W. I'm going to find that surface normal again. Uh, actually, let's click on this front face here. And we're going to put this gizmo and rotate it so it's just right down that axis, then go right to the middle. And then we'll go back in here. You can try doing the taper deformer. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it has semi unintended results. Like if I want to taper this end, but leave this one alone, uh, this isn't the one you want to use. It tapers the whole thing. You can mask. So if you want to, you can go in here and like mask lasso this end here and now you can like taper this end but it's starting to do some weird stuff there so in this instance i'm going to use a deformer and now you can do your x y and z resolution if i'm just doing really simple stuff i'll take these cones and just do really simple and now i can control and then alt and then we'll get rid of that we can kind of just taper this back in like so we can even go through here we can scale that in a little bit or in this case if we want to scale on both sides we can go through here and let's bring everything else back so now we can go through here and we can scale this whole slide like this. Maybe scale this in a little bit, see how that plays. And then hit W to go back and we can move this thing around. And we can go ahead and accept that deformation. All right, um, let's scale this back out just a little bit. I wanna fill in that hole just a tad here. And now these things, again, they're just kind of placeholder so I can feel free to you know, go through here and move these things around. These are still just little concept sketch areas. So nothing set in stone. Um, I probably should start though, bring this down here because uh, this thing's getting a little long in the tooth. I need to finish it out. But a lot of what I need to do 
is sit here and do this a lot and just look at the design and think about functionality. And unfortunately, that's not very entertaining to watch. So, everybody, thanks for showing up. Uh, what graphics card would you recommend for using 3D software? Or Artista asked. Um, that one, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, oh, I, I got even better. So if you go to, if you want to see my personal setup, and that's really all I can talk about really is what I have. I would say what I have is pretty, it, it works fine uh, for, and not just for ZBrush, for all sorts of things. There's some, ZBrush is a very CPU intensive program. So the GPU doesn't matter too much. Uh, other programs it's very, are very GPU intensive and the CPU doesn't matter much. And then some programs they use both. So uh, for example, um, you can go to this. Uh, let me just share you the shorter link here. Copy this. You can go to my YouTube channel, go to the hardware section, and you can see my setup if you want. Uh, you can also go in here to the um, description. So I am running right now GeForce GTX 1080 Ti 11 gig GDDR5X that graphics card um, on the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X 16 core. Uh, CPU and all the other stuff I have on here and then you could you could actually see me unboxing this and doing the monitor setup too um, So yeah, if you're gonna be doing say a lot of uh, you know, exa uh, for example uh, On my YouTube channel as well. There's a photogrammetry uh, I did a photogrammetry series. We did a little bit of photogrammetry cleanup on this channel. So if you go to this photogrammetry here um, Photogrammetry in particular uses all your system resources. So you need a lot of RAM. You need, uh, ZBrush also needs a lot of RAM too to handle large file sizes. The no large number of polygons you can have in ZBrush. Um, but it uses uh, your CPU, uses your GPU, uses a lot of RAM. So the more of that you have to throw a photogrammetry, the better, or the faster it'll go anyways. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, ZBrush, you don't have to break the bank. And I know GPUs are a little hard to come by right now. So I, I wish you luck. It's been kind of a interesting uh, market here. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I got this thing here. If I want to make a change to this thickness as well, I can go in here and QMesh Polygroup All. I can just hold down Shift and I can just pull along that surface normal. So if I want to change, if that's looking not robust enough, I can go through there. And then I can hit Shift D. And I can also pass uh, I need to clean that up a little bit. Looks like when I QMesh that in, I can go through here and just move these. You can use Z Modeler to move individual vertices, but I usually switch over to the Move Brush. Let's go ahead and even these out just a tiny bit. Playing it fast and loose here. And we can also say maybe bevel this edge loop complete here. And now we can do a crease poly group. And crease level of three, dynamic subdivision of four. Might could work. Let's run another crease here. And we'll go ahead and crease. Usually if I'm doing a model that's got some organic and some hard surface edges, those are usually the um, ones I need a little bit more love on the creasing side. Let's go ahead and crease a little four, smooth side of a five. There you go. There's a nice hard surface shape. But we can, if you want a little bit more bevel, we can drop those back down. Cool. Um, uh, Tack asks, may I ask something? What will you use for extracting normal map and displacement map for your model? You use ZBrush. Uh, probably not. In order for me to use ZBrush, I have to have a built-in, um, the, the mesh has, to, it can't be an arbitrary mesh. I'm all about arbitrary meshes. So in order for me to bake something off of say this body, I would have to do a Z remesher or retopologize this and then subdivide and project this detail back to that one mesh and then take that and uh, bake that out using uh, you can go to z plugin here and you can go to the multi-map exporter or you can just go to immediately down here to the displacement map or the normal map creation and you can just bake them all in here uh they do they get very good results there's nothing wrong with them um but also usually when i'm baking and you can bake all sorts of stuff so you can bake curvature maps i'm not trying to say don't use this by all means create all of these maps that you need out of zbrush if you have a mesh that has all your detail on it I usually have a bunch of separate meshes that have my detail and then I bake that out to an arbitrary mesh. And in that instance, usually I'll use Painter just for speed and uh, I don't do a lot of finish work. I usually do a lot of previs work. 
uh, a lot of figuring stuff out quickly and iterating. So let me see. Uh, you can see some of that in uh, the Sci-Fi Pistol series. This is where I go through kind of ZBrush 4R8 uh, new techniques. And we also get down here where we have like the high-res export where we get our material IDs. And then we go through and we UV it. Uh, really quickly do a auto we decimate it for our game res and then we go into painter and we have a little bit of fun texturing it up and rendering and stuff like that so that's a that's a decent one for you guys to watch you guys can um let's go back one here there you go you can check you can check this one out if that helps and i also do that a bunch of different times on my channel so if you do go to the playlist and you go to like live stream highlights and you scroll down you'll see a bunch of robots where way back in the day we made these little cute little robots and then we did the exact same thing where we just um, did our material IDs and then we took them into painter and just threw some rusty metal on them and then took them into iray and painted little sad faces on them that's fun stuff that's the fun stuff and also it's a lot of bang for your buck you know this this type of rendering you can do it in keyshot as well but then getting these this texturing and the edge wear is super fast you can do it all you can do this uh, kind of work in zbrush as well you can do poly painting and stuff uh, and then throw it in a key shot or you can take it in a painter and then a key shot but uh, usually oh speaking of gpus if you're going to be using the iray render in painter you're going to want an nvidia card because i don't think radeon cards work with uh, nvidia iray so it's going to default to your cpu and it's not going to run very quickly so that's one instance one program one part of a program where your graphics card is important um, and that's just the iRay part. If you're just using Substance Painter, I think it'll use Radeon just fine. <sighs> cool. Um, I, I don't know what the best... I mean, for RAM, the more the merrier, I think. Yeah, and, and uh, like Ghetto Art says, ZBrush, will, anything that has a CPU, it'll run on it. So if your refrigerator has a CPU in it, uh, you could you could put ZBrush on there. It may not run real quick, or you may not be able to throw 2 billion polygons at, polygons at it, but um, it will certainly run, and you will be able to do quite a bit of work. You'd be surprised how naturally, I don't know if it's naturally optimized, but it's, it's fairly optimized. Uh, I'm going to run a, another deformation on this one here. I want to just pull that this uh, back here. I just want to see a little bit more from this front view here. There we go. And I think that'll work. Uh, on Geometry HD, is it possible to extract mesh in Geometry HD? Um... That I don't know. I remember, ooh, it's been a while since I used Geometry HD. Extracting a mesh. You can bake your HD sculpts to a displacement map, but I don't think you can extract. Can you extract geometry? You can, if it's a small enough area, you can convert that to real geometry, I believe. Uh, you know what? Let's do this. Uh, who was doing that? It was Paul Gabry. So if you go to... Give me a second, give me a second. Stream, workshop, pixel logic. I think it was Paul's latest stream. Let's track this down. So we're gonna go to videos here and let's do a search in here for Paul Gabriel, did you know the Halloween edition? I want the latest. 16. Can I sort? Can I sort this? Can I sort this? Mmm. Maybe not. Yeah, did you know that? Look through here for did you know that with Paul Gabry. Uh, I don't remember if it was this one. Maybe it was this one. I need to I need to go back through. I'm trying to catch up on everybody's videos. It's a lot of videos on here. So, um, you know what? Maybe it was this one where he goes through and he was... Yeah, this is his HD sculpting. Let me link you guys to this one. So this will tell you all about HD sculpting in here. So it looks like I missed one of his videos. I need to go back and watch it. Um, so he goes through here and talks a lot about how to use HD sculpting and all that good stuff. I don't do a whole lot of HD sculpting myself, uh, but if that's your thing, I don't really need to go that high resolution for video games. And usually, if I'm at that level of detail, it's better off to do it non-destructively in the texture than it is to do it in ZBrush and then have to bake that out again. Now, your mileage may vary, uh, but that's just my experience. 
Uh, sorry for the ignorance. What's the difference between dynamic subdivision and normal subdivision? When should I use it? 100% of the time I use Dynamesh when sculpting and adding levels of detail. So that's fine to do for, for me. That's fine to do for like getting my ideas out. But once I want to do a very concrete shape, what I'll do is use dynamic subdivision just like I did here. And what that is and why that's a good thing is you can go through here under geometry, dynamic subdivision, and you can hit D and that's going to turn it on. You can do shift D and that's going to turn it off. Now, the cool thing is if I hit D and I'm in dynamic subdivision, it's going to give me a preview of what this would look like if I actually did. Let's do shift D. If I went control D, it's going to give me real subdivisions here. Um, and it's going to look like this. However, if I wanted to get those nice bevels, basically what I did was I put my crease level at three and my dynamic subdivision level at four. So if it's your crease level is lower than your dynamic subdivision, it's basically telling ZBrush, subdivide up three times, uncrease everything, and then divide one more time. So in order to do that manually, what I'd have to do at this point is go into my crease menu and um, uncrease all, and then control D one more time, and then control D, and that'll give me that smooth look. However, if I put that in real subdivision levels, I can't go back and go, oh, you know what? I want to put an inset here and it kind of extract a shape out so I can put like a little clip on the side here or put a button on here because now you have real subdivision level. So even if I want to do something as simple as, you know, drop a primitive on here, it's not going to let me. So now I can delete lower, put a primitive on here, split that off, and then, oops, go through here and I can reconstruct it again. But and then I can go in and model it, but it's just really, it's anytime you put actual subdivision levels on an object, it's super destructive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this object. We'll go back here and we'll just go back to where we had this object. So now uh, let's go back to where we had dynamic subdivision levels. There we go. So if you ever are in dynamic and you have like smooth subdiv up to five and then crease level of three, you get that look and I can see what it's going to look like. But if I want to keep modeling on this, all I got to do is hit shift D. I can go through here and I can say, you know what? I wanted to inset um, a poly right here. And then I wanted to inset it again. And then I wanted to Q mesh this thing back here. And then I can just run another uh, crease on this one. And then I can hit D and let's go ahead and crease these corners here. There we go. So now we can keep making changes. And if I can hit, I can hit shift D and keep modeling. I can hit D and I have a preview of what that's going to look like. And I can even go through here. We can insert, let's go BI brush insert model toolkit here. I can do any sort of insert brush. Let's go ahead and see if we can find it. We want to put like a little vent on the side here. So we can go through here and we can insert that. Let's go out of solo mode like so. And let's go ahead and scale this out. So it kind of fits in there and I can go ahead and split that off if I want to, or I can just leave it on there. That's fine. Um, so I can insert and I can still see what it's going to look like when I subdivide. It's not real subdivisions, but it's, it allows me a lot more flexibility on my meshes. And then if I'm ever ready to go, you know what, turn this into real subdivision levels so I can sculpt dings or scratches on it if I need to. And even dings and scratches, if they're not changing the silhouette, I would do it in the texture. I would leave this alone and any little paint flakes and dings and scratches, I wouldn't bother doing in ZBrush. But again, that's just my workflow, your mileage may vary, but if I want to make this real subdivision levels, all you got to do is go in here to apply and then you can go through here and now you can ding this thing up and scratch it up and all that good stuff that you need to do for sculpting purposes. So kind of up to you, but I really, really try and just work in uh, dynamic subdivision as much as possible. And then, cause yeah, anytime you go to Dynamesh, now Dynamesh is also fine if you want to just like, let's take this thing here. Let's go ahead and split this out. And the reason I might split this thing out is because maybe I don't want to, I don't need to smooth it up to five. Maybe I just need to, because this geometry is different. So if I just need to smooth this thing up to two, we'll do a crease level of one and that'll give me the look I want or I'll do crease level two, smooth subdivide of three. Yeah, if that's enough, I don't need to subdivide it all the way to five. So that's another reason why I might split that off. Um, but also I can convert that to Dynamesh if I want to. So we can go ahead and say, I'm going to, duplicate this off just so we're not going to mess with it too much. Now, if I just Dynamesh it as is, if I go up here and say, okay, let's go ahead and just Dynamesh this thing, it's going to go back to its blocky form. So you're going to want to apply those subdivisions and then crank up your resolution here. We'll hit Dynamesh. And then there we got a Dynamesh version of this. And now you can go through and do stuff like, let's go ahead and do a slice curve. Let's hit Control W, make it all in poly group. So let's say, um, 
I want to put a panel through here. There's a lot of different ways to do panels, but this will be one of them. So we can go and go slice through here. I'm going to turn groups on. We can just dynamesh this. And then if I want to maybe take this one here. And let's say I'm going to do control shift and then we're going to do a bar brush radius and we're going to make my brush about the A big. And that'll give me a perfectly spaced brush radius size of those groups and we can control drag. And let's say we want to take this one now mask that one out and then we can center that mask we can scale this down and push this in a little bit so now we got that kind of look and if you want this to be a separate material i would go ahead and just split that out before i do that turn off groups and then we can split that out and let's go ahead and hide this uh d -d 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 -d. which one is it that's my split one and this is my fake one so we'll turn that one off Okay, um, so now, well, you can't really see it. Let's just work on these ones that we have here. So I'm going to hold down shift, turn that off, and then these two we're working on here. So we have this one popped out. It's a separate object, so I'm going to do some other stuff to it. Then we have this one. I'm going to go ahead and turn groups off for this one as well. I already did. Control drag, and then that'll go ahead and put these together. Now, if the Dynamesh resolution would have been higher, I wouldn't have to do a whole lot of cleanup here. Oops, I turned groups back on, sorry. You wouldn't have to do this cleanup, but since I'm dynamishing at a slightly lower resolution, you might have to go in here and smooth these little transitions out. Um, but now that these are separate, I can go through here and we can say go to the side and we can start clip brush here. And all, all the stuff I'm doing, you're not really seeing on the actual, on the, on the model, uh, but you can feel free to do any sort of stuff you want to do. Uh, and now that it's dynamesh, you can go through here. Let's grab some brushes here and go to this and we'll say we'll grab some base shapes you can have a little bit more fun just kind of exploring you know what these things will look like so let's do the intensity down just a little bit and go through here and we can just put some of that stuff in there maybe and you can search through here as well i tend to like uh, this is just a little bit faster for me sometimes we can put a little button on this side here or we can hold down alt and push it in whatever you want to do so feel free to kind of go through here and play around. And I like to do like maybe big surface changes as well, where you can kind of play around with, you know, instead of modeling the shape out, sometimes it's funner just to kind of do that type of thing. And then if we go out of, just go ahead and bring everything back and we'll turn this one off. So now we have, oh geez, you still, you know, be careful when you're modeling stuff that you're not just modeling stuff that doesn't see, doesn't seem, but now we've got, uh, this type of shape in here. It's a little bit more interesting. So feel free to use both, uh, but I would say, like I said before, stay in dynamic as long as you can. Cool. Um, so Art says, uh, it's really nice. I like to read more on that. Uh, hard surface and dynamesh with polish applied to it and abuse a trim curve brush to create hard edge shapes and that's totally valid in fact on my keep bringing this up what am i looking for here if you go back to my older videos um i'm not even sure if z modeler was a thing when i was starting this but you go to like the zbrush mech helmet concept so if you want to see give me a second sample files mech helmet so for example, uh, this is mech helmet I did for Quixel way a long time ago. Um, this thing I didn't, I don't think I used any Z modeler on it. I think this was all shapes that were sculpted out, rebuilt, um, and then just detailed up. And like you said, these things here weren't beveled. You can actually see they're a little bit warbly. Because I use trim dynamic and clipping brushes to kind of get this effect. And there's nothing wrong with it. It worked out fine. And once you bake it to a map, so it's, it's perfectly fine. If you want to see the making of this thing, you can go to actually, I would say again, my art station page is probably a little bit better than my YouTube channel. You can go down here and you can say, okay, here's some beauty shots, blah, 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 blah. Uh, here's the GDC presentation I did using this as an example. And then there's a sketch fab model so you can see it starts really gummy and then you go in here and clean it up and then you, again using trim like you were doing h polish trim dynamic uh clipping to kind of just keep getting it'll go through in your alpha stamp so this is where it starts and then as you build up and kind of refine it just gets sharper and sharper and the cool thing is once you get to about this point right here there's really no surprises so about four hours in you're pretty much done 
you know, you can take this into a video game and you can, and that's what my GDC presentation is about, is you can just throw it in, take, export it from ZBrush, throw it into Painter, put it in a game, and you can evaluate it just fine. Uh, and then you can spend the time, once you've approved it, way back here, there's no real surprises by the time you get it to here. So there's that stuff, and I think so, there's some little techniques you can use. And some of these are pretty dated, like there's better ways to do this stuff now, maybe. But uh, here's, you know, this, you know, watching it, the sculpting and the refinement and all that good stuff. So it goes all the way through the process of making this thing all the way through detailing it. And it starts really gross. It starts really ugly. Um, is there any possibility to remove some ZBrush limits like opening high resolution meshes or sometime I know I can subdivide one more time on my mesh, but because of the level limit, ZBrush asked me to delete a few of my levels, changing memory settings. Um, yeah, photogrammetry, if you've got a lot of geometry, sometimes that'll be an issue. I don't really run into that. Pro I don't do a ton of photogrammetry, uh, but if you have, if it's, a, if it's a subdivision level thing, what you can do is you can redistribute your polygons. So for example, uh, let me see if I have a good example. Let me see, load this up. Let's do streaming. Uh, let's do ZBrush Female Cybernetic Arms, Mario World. Let's grab our old man. Chaps McGee is always a good example guy. Okay, so uh, let's say we want to subdivide this guy up here. Uh, oh, you know what? We baked we baked some stuff on him, I think. Let me go to texture map here. Off. Alrighty. So uh, if you're subdividing and it's is saying like, hey, too much. What you can do, if you're able to, is you can redistribute this geometry. So it would basically be a matter of um, duplicating your mesh off and then going through here with, say, you can do it through decimation as well. But if you want a little bit of a nicer result, you can go through here and you can say, what am I doing? I don't want you. I want a uh, zero measure. So we'll go through here, the Z remesher, and we'll say use poly paint, and we'll say color density of two. We'll go ahead and, you know what, we'll fill this with white. And then on this one, if we want to do two density, go through here and you can paint, whoa, let's turn on RGB for a standard brush here. It's like all that detail, all I really need it is like right here in this area. The rest of it, I don't care. In fact, the rest of it, I don't care so much. I can go through here. You know what? Let's do this. Let's do a color density of like 0.5. And I'm going to fill that object. That's just under color fill. And then now we'll do a color density of 2x. And then we can go through here and say, I just need detail in this area. And then you can redistribute these polygons using zero measure. So using poly paint. Uh, do, 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 do. We don't need to keep groups. We'll zero mesh. I guess we can do 622. Let's do a depth size 25 is fine. Let's do a target polygon count of like 10. And we'll let that spin for a minute. Basically, so as I subdivide this and I'm working, I'll be able to, all the, where I need detail, I'll have it. And then where I don't need detail, I don't need it. And then as I subdivide, I might not need to subdivide it as many times because all of my detail is in here. Um, the reason I don't run into a lot of subdivision problems is I work with, yeah, so you can see now we've redistributed those polygons. We have a lot of polygons here and then not a lot here. If you need to get that detail back, let's go ahead and turn off this stuff here. And you know what? Did I not turn that damn texture off? I got colorize off. What's going on here? That's just pink. Okay. Um, so we can take this one here and we can do project all and then subdivide control D project all subdivide project all subdivide project all and we'll subdivide one more time I'll project all. So now I'm up at 2 million polygons, but most of those polygons are packed right in here. And then the rest of them, um, it's not taking up too much space. So now when I go in here and sculpt, I will get, a very, oops, the add on. Um, I get a very fine result here. So let's go ahead and say, let's clone this off and we'll say we're gonna spray some alpha here. So we can go through here and we can get very, very fine detail through here, like mega detail. 
but back here, you're not going to get that same resolution. You see those the very, very fine detail in here, and really not fine detail here. Not ideal, and you can't like watch the Paul Gabriel HD geometry walkthrough. You can use HD on HD geometry instead of redistributing, or you can do both if you really need to punch punch it up a bit. Um, HD HD geometry will save you some headaches if you need to go super high resolution, but that's one option maybe. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So when I was talking about <coughs> Uh, this thing, yeah, the, uh, okay, let's go back here. So usually when I'm blocking something in by the time, you know, here's even a better example. Let's go to this lovely lady here is my GDC female. So when I say four hours, what I'm usually meaning, and that includes concept time is this one right here. This would be, if I'm just kind of like spitballing ideas and I have a base mesh in here doing this version right here would be about four hours you know just to kind of get my ideas out and get it blocked in uh, and then I would spend maybe a day refining and again a lot of that is also designing so while you're refining you're breaking pieces apart you're thinking about functionality and you're going through here and kind of figuring stuff out so it's not like I'm just executing if I was just executing um, you could get really far in just a day but like if a concept artist handed me off this version right here, going to this version would take me just a, a couple days. Just because you're just executing, you're just rebuilding, you're refining, and you're done. Um, you know, doing the concepting part is actually the more time consuming part for sure. But yeah, this this sculpt right here would be like a four hour sculpt. And, and half of that would be spent just thinking about stuff and doing and kind of look in and, and if you want to see the making of this you can go to my youtube channel and you can see kind of how i broke down and there's also some other examples in there of just kind of spitballing ideas i think there's like a, a weapon breakdown in there and some of that stuff's pretty dated um my, my youtube channel's getting a little old but cool thanks everybody thanks for showing up everybody um candy says i want to know how to do that in 3d studio max what you just did oh that's a good one I'm not sure, I'm sure there's, it, if it's not native, I'm not a 3D Studio Max user anymore. It's been a long time since I've been in there. I'm trying to think if even Maya has like a Z remesh option. I don't even bother at this point because ZBrush is so good at it that I just stay in ZBrush and do it. Uh, I'm not sure if they have a native like redis polygon redistributor. And even if they did, who oh boy, like, taking this model in and snapping vertices at 2 million polygons, good luck getting those verts to move in Maya or Max. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. That's the other thing about ZBrush is it handles polygons like nobody's business. Hard to beat. Uh, other programs, you can load a lot of polygons in other programs, so if you want to manipulate those polygons, your machine will slow to a crawl. Whereas in ZBrush, it's like, oh, you want 2 million polygons? Go ahead, just sculpt on it or do whatever you need. No problem. Oh, another thing about hard surface modeling, uh, I would keep perspective off. I know that might be a little bit tough on your designing, but really, even designing, I just keep perspective off. In hard edge modeling, I keep perspective off because it can throw off uh, your straights You know, while you're doing cube modeling and you're clicking, alt-tapping. In fact, let's see if I can just, let's see if it'll work here. So if I have a cube here, when edit mode here, we'll turn on X symmetry, make a polymesh 3D, turn on X symmetry here. <clears throat> so we have a uh, cube here, and if I hit W, let's turn off X symmetry. And I hold on Alt. Actually, also you can do group by normal, so we can have a little bit of fun with this. Um, if we hit Alt, we can tap and we can find that surface direction. And you can see if I snap to the side orthographically, it's going to point straight out. If I turn on perspective and tap Alt on this surface, and then I go out of perspective, um, let's see if I can do this here perspective and we'll tap alt on this side and then we turn perspective off um, and we want to say let's move actually if you hold down control and tap it'll go ahead and mask that polygroup as well so let's turn perspective back on uh, sometimes if you go through here and you have perspective on and you want to move this like straight in this direction along that surface normal it just it's not right on so you can see perspective mode, it's kind of off kilter a little bit. Uh, we can try again. Let 
that time it worked, but I've just found that take, having perspective turned off, it's much more consistent in uh, while we're, you know, control tapping on this stuff and then moving this stuff out. Um, although in that case, it didn't do it. Let's see, control tap. There you go. It'll just give you the, just a little bit more consistent. Then you can go through here and start doing your, your hard surface modeling here. So again, if we want to say, take this here. And if you want to do, let's do an inset polygon like ball. So another, oh, you can inset all of them. I usually do inset region. But the cool thing is, if we Q mesh this back, if you're just doing boxy style modeling, instead of doing uh, dynamic, see how it kind of averages the vertices, then you got to go in here and be like, okay, I got to do a bunch of creasing, then drop my crease level below and then my smooth subdivision up, and then you can get those hard edge shapes. If you're just doing boxy modeling, I would say instead of doing smooth, let's do Q grid. So with Q grid turned on, you can change the coverage. You can just like build in your bevels here. And then as you're doing modeling and that these, these, uh, these sides aren't doing me any, any help. I wonder if we can Z remesh those really quick. Let's say we want to do this slide here. This may not work that great. Um, these polarized caps, in order to avoid that, what I would usually do, and I can just do that really quickly, I can go through here and I go to initialize, and I can just do a Q cube with like 8 for my resolution. And then you're going to want to unify that deformation. Whoops. Unify. Uh, this is, a, you don't, you can skip those polarized caps here, and now uh, it might be a little bit easier for you to model on. So, for example, we'll go back here and we'll do our whole inset here. Beep, boop, beep, one, two, Q mesh, this back. And now instead of creasing, what I'm going to do, if I'm just doing, like I said, boxy style modeling, I can go through, and if we want to do that taper like we did on the back, um, let's go back to mask pin, hold down control and alt, and then we'll center that, and then we'll scale that in, and we'll just move that back. So instead of creasing, we can go to our dynamic, and then uh, we can do our coverage. If we do a really large coverage, getting a really big bevel, you can also go in here and you can do a chamfer and that'll round out your edges. And then your uh, Q grid, you can turn that up and that'll hold your edges a little bit tighter. And you can also, you can mix Q grid with smooth subdivision. So if we turn on one, that'll give me a smooth transition on those chamfers. So you can get a really nice um, chamfer result. Or if you don't want chamfer, just turn it off. And now you're back in bevel mode here and you can turn smooth up on the bevel if you want to and make them really big if you need to. And again, it's just a preview. So you can always do shift D and go back to what you were working on. And you'd be like, you know what, let's pull these out. And these ones I'm going to hold down shift and I can move them up or I can maybe do an inset first and then hold down shift. Uh, now this polygroup all is grabbing these polygroups in here. So while I'm insetting this, I'm going to tap alt that was give me a new one. And now I can Q mesh polygroup all, or you can just do polygroup Island if you don't want to mess with other polygroups and they are in other areas. And now if I hit D, um, it'll go ahead and give me those bevels. Let's go ahead and change our coverage here so we can tighten those up. And again, where this breaks down, and I've gone over this before, is if you were to do um, something like something that was rounded. So if you take this here and we Q mesh this out, it's still working fine because it's boxy. Um, and then we take these out, still working fine because it's boxy. Uh, but as soon as we introduce something like uh, bridge, connected poly, circle, curvature of 108, align to normal triangle sides, and you do something rounded, now it kind of breaks down because that rounded form gives you that. So in this case, you'd have to turn Q grid off and then use your creasing and then use your smooth subdivision of like three and then crease level of like two. And now you can kind of go back to that style. Hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, this is for ZBrush on Mudbox. I have no idea. Uh, I want to say I used Mudbox in like 2008. <laughs> or No, it might have been a little early. I'm trying to remember the last time I did. I was in college still. It's been a long time. I have no idea. Um, cool. Hey, Hugo, thanks for showing up. And uh, what else? What else we want to do? Um, any other things? We kind of worked on this a little bit. Let me go ahead and save this one out. Streaming. That was our old man. What we could do, um, date modified. No. What am I thinking of? We're doing the ZBrush female. There we go. 
I'm just going to save over this one here. Uh, if we go ahead and delete all here, let's load up some of these things that we can make a little scene maybe. Let's see, streaming, uh, view, details. So we've got this Bowser refine. So we've kind of started refining him. Let me see. Uh, I also use Quadro Reference Viewer. So if I go to um, run this thing here, let's see if I got that Bowser Jr. reference open recent. Yeah. I'm going to load that up. And now I've got a bunch of Bowser reference here. So anything else I need to add to this guy, we can finish him up real quick. Uh, we got this. You know what? Let's make a little uh, bomb he can throw because I'm seeing a lot of this reference here. He's throwing this guy around. So let's go ahead and make him real quick. So edit, go out of here. And you know what? Let's even grab some reference so we can match that. Let's go to, what was it called? Bob Bombs? Yeah. Let me see. Let me get a decent front view of this thing here. I just want to match his overall proportions. I'm trying to get a drawing. Just so if you did have to translate, you know, 3D to 2D, I can show you that. But most of them are actually 3D nowadays. All right. Mario, Mario. All right, you know what? We'll just grab the one from the Bowser reference I'm looking at. Texture, import, reference, and let's see if we can just grab, uh, that one will work. So we're gonna grab that texture, add him, and we'll go ahead and scale him up, because all I really care about is this guy right here. We're gonna make him. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down uh, that opacity here. So I can kind of see it in the back. And then we'll start from a sphere. I don't really like to work with a resolution sphere that's that high. If I go into edit mode and turn on polyframe, we're going to see. We go down here to initialize while it's a primitive. We can go through here and we can do H divides. Let's do like 16. I think that'll work fine. And then we'll take uh, make polymesh 3D here. And then as I'm working on this, I can use this to dictate um, where these cuts are going to go. And I can also, if I go into X symmetry here and we're going to turn on dynamic, uh, I'm sorry, the floor grain, floor plane. So the Z, Z forward is what we want to work on. And then the eyeballs here, if we go Alt E M, I'm just going to put some placeholder eyeballs on here. We're going to split those off. If you want these to always drag out straight at you, you can actually go into the picker here and we're going to go to orientation, just tap this arrow. And now that'll always drag straight out. So now we can use that as placeholder for those eyeballs here. Again, just to kind of, and we're going to do a much better job in that once we get this guy figured out. But I'm just going to use this to dictate. We can even turn on perspective and we can say, let's turn that floor off. So now we know we're forward and our guy is positioned right here. So we're, we're going to be using this to kind of tell us where to put those cuts. So let's hit Z and we can go in and bring up our opacity. So per, luckily, we don't even have to move this line right here. It's just going to go and be modeled straight up. It looks like... Is that a separate piece? You know what? We'll just we'll keep it simple and ah, it's gonna be a different material or different color. Give me a second. Yeah, let's pop that off. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to uh, first we're gonna save this. Now and you there's two ways you can do this. You can go to document and you can say Zaplink properties and you can store a custom one. So now if I'm moving, whoops, that was oops. <laughs> so undo that. We've got our uh, Z forward, and we're going to put that midline between the eyes right down the middle of the object here. And these eyes are off scale, but that's okay. I'm really just looking at the body here right now. Um, so let's go ahead and undo that custom one. So we can do uh, clear all or clear two. And then we can do, uh, I can save custom one. So if I go through here and I'm moving this thing around and I'm sculpting and I can snap back to where it needs to go. Um, alternative to that, if you don't want to, if you feel like going in your document menu or setting up an interface of that, what I'll do is I'll go into the movie timeline show and I'll just put a little dot right here where, and that's where this thing is going to snap to. So you can put in like multiple views in here. And then as you use your arrow keys, it'll snap through those different views here. Uh, if you don't need them, just drag them off. So now, no matter where I put this guy, 
I can just use my arrow keys to snap it back. And I don't even need to see that. If I'm just storing, storing one, I can go back here to movie and then turn off show. And then I can just start modeling and then just use my arrow keys to snap it back. So there's that. Now, while I'm in here, I can hold down alt and I can indicate where that's going to be modeled. So I can do shift Z and I'll just go ahead and keep painting this back here. And then we can hit, um, let's hit control W. So here's the problem. I need this to be a cylinder that I'm going to extrude up. If I want to, um, I can duplicate this thing off and then I can isolate this thing. I can do like delete hidden and then I can just Q mesh this up and that'll get, but it's going to start like Q meshing out. You can, um, if you didn't delete, you can hit W and control tap this top piece here and then reset its orientation Then hold that control and just pull that straight up. Uh, it's one way to do it, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to isolate this, delete hidden. You can even go to the side here and you can clip it, you can clip it back. And then you can Q mesh it straight up, uh, but I'm not even going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start Q meshing this up. Actually, let's go ahead and do insert single edge loop. We'll get rid of this one. I'm going to say Q mesh, Q mesh this up. And then I'm going to say control shift and I'm going to grab this top piece, invert that control, uh, invert both of those. And I'm going to delete hidden. And then I'm going to do a quick close convex hole and just pop that here. Control W, delete hidden. And now I can do Q mesh polygraphile and just pull this straight up. Now it's going to flip your normals. So you're going to want to flip those back. That's going to be under display properties here. Flip. If you, if you ever have double turned on, sometimes some operations will have double on and you have um, your polygons are flipped and you go through here and you try and inflate. It's going to be like, oh, it's doing the opposite of what I'd expect. And sometimes your brushes will behave weird. Uh, go down here, display properties, turn off double and make sure these things are flipped. So now we've got this thing. So again, we'll use our arrow keys to put that back, shift Z to bring this back. And now we can do Q mesh polygroup island. And now we can just hold down shift as we pull up and we can just kind of match that. And we also have that little wick coming out the top. So we can go through here and we can do an inset uh, polygroup all. So we can just inset this here. And if we need to, we can slide that in. Edge loop completely and slide this in a little bit more. Uh, let's see, top view, it's not super wide. So I think that'll work. And again, we're just going to do a Q mesh. And uh, let's do an inset first. Inset in a little bit and then we'll Q mesh this down. And then if we want to pull a wick, from this, we want to make it exactly that size. We can just do a Q mesh polygraph island, hold down control. That'll pop out a copy of this. I, and I'm also going to turn off perspective. I tend to like things separate. So I'm going to go ahead and split that off. That's under your subtool menu. Let me just pull that right back down in there. Um, in order to give this kind of a curve, what we can do, so you go into solo mode here, tap it so we're on the bottom and we can go ahead and move this out. So we have our wick. Let's go ahead and make sure it's uh, as big as it needs to be. So we can kind of thin that out a little bit here. So uh, there's our wick, but it's going to keep be kind of bent. So we're going to go ahead and use some deformers for that. We need resolution first. We're going to insert multiple edge loops and we'll just drop in insert multiple edge loops, keep el interactive elevation off. And then we can just go ahead and we'll just subdivide this nice and evenly. Hit control W, make it all in poly group. And now you can try going in here and doing like a bend arc. So you can just kind of, if you're doing a simple arc bend, you can kind of do this. Uh, if you want a little more control, I like to do this bend curve. And now if you crank up this, for example, this resolution slider, um, you can add more resolution, but it's going the wrong way. So take this axis and go down the axis here and you can just add as much resolution or as little resolution as you want. And we don't need that much. I think we can just take this one here. We can just bend this one up and over. Did I turn on symmetry? Symmetrical, no. Is that just a little graphical? Oh. Turn off X symmetry. There you go. So we can kind of bend that out. And you know, you don't have to match this bend necessarily, but if you want to, you can you can certainly do that. Um, also, the black part of this we can paint in later if we want it to be a different material that we put like a little cherry on it and key shot. We can figure that out. If we want to kind of mark where that's going to go, we can say polygroup poly loop. And we can just tap that one. If you're having a hard time getting these edges, you can just use your mouse. This is the one of the few times in ZBrush I'll use a mouse is just doing this kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and mark these ones. Now, if I want to make this the same polygroup as that one, what I can do is I can hold down Alt and start painting on here. Tap Shift, that'll inherit it. And then we can just keep painting up here. So now we've got those two separate polygroups here. So let's go back. We're in good shape here and I'll turn perspective back on. So 
everything's matching up pretty well. Um, looks like when I turn perspective back on, this thing moved a little bit, but again, that's okay. Artistic license, right? Now we need to put feet on this guy. A um, couple different ways we can make feet. These are pretty simple feet. We can probably just use a cylinder um, tapered and moved back. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can actually use that as like an insert mesh brush if I want to. So let's, if we don't have a cylinder available to us we want to use, we can go in here and we'll say we initialize this. And again, we're going to keep this simple. We'll do like 12. V divide, or yeah, we'll do three on the V divide, or four on the V divides. We'll say make poly mesh 3D. And we can hold down control shift. I'm going to isolate this back part here and then mask and invert that. Hold down control and we'll just pull this back. So now we've got kind of a foot shape going. And looking at the bottom of the feet, they just kind of taper nicely back. So again, we'll use our taper trick that we talked about earlier, which was our deformer here, and then control alt, and then we'll just scale this in. And actually, we don't even need to move that back that far. So it's kind of this shape, and it looks like this one actually tapers out just a little bit more. Um, in fact, let's say, okay, I'm going to accept this. And there's a little bit of a change I want to make, so we're going to go back to Deformer. And on this resolution, we're going to add another little divider. So I can take this one, and we can just pull this out a little bit. All right, I think that's what his feet look like. So let's go ahead and do a group by normals, and then we'll Q-mesh this back down. Hold down Shift and just push this down. Ooh, so now we need to round out this top. We can maybe see if we can do a close convex hole if that'll give us um, kind of a rounded top. And I think it'll do an okay job. Um, we might need to Z remesh that. In order to get a decent Z remesh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to insert a multiple edge loop. Actually, I don't even need to do this necessarily. Let's do another group by normals. There we go. And then we'll do a close convex hole. And if this, that polarized geometry isn't really what I'm looking for here, and also I need to kind of change the shape of this a little bit. You know what? We can even just box model this up. It's not a huge deal. So for example, we can go QMesh Polygroup Island. Uh, we can pull this up, and then we can kind of round this out manually. So Control Alt. I was going to say we could build that basic shape and then Z remesh it, and that would be fine to do. Uh, but you can also just go through here and you can like use bevels and stuff to round these out. So we'll go bevel, edge loop complete. And if you want to, you can go in here and insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. And we can continue to just kind of round this out just a little bit here. So that'll be our basic shape like so. Let's turn off. So we got perspective turned on. Uh, and now that we have this resolution, we can go through here and like modify this stuff. Now, this is also another good... Um, if you wanted to just really quickly get the shape in, let's say uh, if, you, if you're not a big fan of box modeling, you could DynaMesh this and then clip and smooth and then Z-Remesh all this stuff together instead of doing like a Boolean operation. So for example, we'll go ahead and just crease this, turn on dynamic, and we'll apply that and we'll just DynaMesh this thing. So now that we have this DynaMesh shape, we can go through, let's actually lower that resolution. We'll turn on X symmetry here. And we can go ahead and just do basic ZBrush sculpting. I'm going to do Smooth Stronger. And we can say, you know what, this has to be, let's go ahead and mask this bottom here. This has to be kind of bubbled out a little bit. We can go and smooth that down. So this kind of bubbles out here. And then it kind of tapers back down. You could do all of this with the de deformers and box modeling. I'm just showing you guys another technique you could utilize. And what else trying to see? Here we can kind of fudge the shape here. And um, even though we're doing it kind of just f feeling it out in uh, zero mesh, you could even, since we are in DynaMesh, we can really quickly, let's throw a cylinder 32, we can add some legs in here. And is that going to be wide enough? Let's go ahead and widen that out just a little bit. So now we got these two, we can DynaMesh these together like so. And now we can go through here and let's just do a couple groups here. So I'm gonna hit, I uh, will hit Control W and then I'm just gonna do a trim curve. We're gonna do a trim curve here. 
oops, let's turn off control shift, turn off B radius. We turned that on a, a little while ago. I'm going to do a trim on the top and the bottom so we can get new poly groups here. And you know, I, when I dynamesh these together, I could have kept that as a separate poly group, but I think it'll be okay. So now I'm just going to isolate this one. We're going to do delete hidden. And now we can just do a quick zero mesher half, adapt a size down. And we can just zero mesh this to the shape that we want. And that way we don't have to model it. And then we can go back here and then we can just go to a close convex hole. And we'll go ahead and close this convex hole as well. I think that'll work. Um, if you wanted to do a little bit fancier work in here to get a different shape, you could. But I think that'll work okay. Let's make this a little bit more obvious. And now we can go through here. We can do our crease level of two or two maybe, and then dynamic smooth of three. And then we can do a crease poly group. And now we've got our foot hanging out here. And if we need to make, you know, this bottom part a little heavier, or you want to add, we'll do shift D. If you wanted to do say Q mesh poly group island, and Q mesh this out and Q mesh this out. And now you've got like a little lip on here. Uh, I don't see one in the reference, but that's, the kind of quick stuff you can do after you've done Dynamesh work. You can zero mesh it, get this shape, and then just modify it to your liking. Or you can even simply go through here now and hold down shift and change this. And you don't have to go and like mask and drag and clip and smooth. Um, so you can use the best of both worlds in ZBrush is basically what I'm saying. Um, but speaking of that, I do want to actually move this down like so. So now that we have a foot, we can add this back to our geometry. We can append it or we can turn this into a brush. So I'm going to go to B, create insert mesh new, and we'll go back to our working dude. And then here's his head. And then his feet need to go here somewhere. And we'll go ahead and turn on X symmetry, which we have on this guy. And we can go ahead and split those off. And he's just going to be kind of hanging out here. And if you want to like add knees and a little bit of personality to this guy, you have enough resolution to, you can go ahead and like mask half of him and then go through here and you kind of bend these knees back a little bit. Like he's just kind of hanging there in space. And we can also uh, maybe grab, we'll grab this top part here and we can just give us a little bit more breathing room on that, on those legs there. You can go outwards, inwards, Kind of just decide on what pose is going to give him the look you're going for here. Let's say inwards is kind of a little bit more unsure of himself, maybe. And he'll just be kind of hanging there in space. So we've got this. Now we need to do some serious work on those eyeballs. And I'm going to use... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How do we want to do this? Let's say these eyeballs are just placeholder. So I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to invert that. We're going to do delete hidden. So we've got this ball sitting here. I'm going to duplicate this off. We're going to hit control D to get some actual subdivision levels. I know I told you not to do that, but the reason I'm doing it is so I can go through here and I can just use RGB and I can paint where I want my eyeballs to go. So I know that those are where the eyeballs are going to end up. Now what I can do is let's go to RGB intensity down, color, fill object. Let's raise it up just a little bit. So we're going to use that as kind of placeholder and I can just simply go in here. There's a lot of different ways you could do this. You could make the eyeballs and stretch them out and then use um, insert mesh with project strength turned on or use matchmaker to make these things match. But I'm just going to take the easy route and we're just going to mask where these eyeballs are on the mesh. And then we're going to hit control W. Actually, before we hit control W, and we see if we hit control W, we're gonna have to clean up these jagged edges. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna go to my edge loop here. We're gonna do edge loop mask border after we delete lower. So that'll just go ahead and give us a cleaner result right off the bat. If we do wanna smooth these out just a little bit, you can go here to masking, mask border, invert that. And I like to use a little bit of, uh, I, for some reason, polish by features, just tap it with open circle. It tends to give me a good result. Um, well, you can do any of these polish or polish edges or polish whatever. So now that we have that, we can delete hidden. And now we can go through here. And again, just let zero mesh do the heavy lifting. Adapt the size down to zero. Um, oops, I went up. Let's do half. There we go. I think that'll be fine for basic eyeballs. We can mush this around a little bit. And now we can go through here. Q mesh polygroup island. 
we can Q mesh this out and then I can also um, hold on shift and just pull that in just a little bit um, and it's going to round as we pull out so what I'm going to do is hit W control tap this we've got LSIM turned on so we're going to locally scale on this axis and kind of pull this in and let's Q mesh out where we can hold down control and pull this out just a little bit more like so and if you want to even round these out more we can go in here and like bevel this edge loop here and let's see let's hit control W and let's run a group by normals here and let's do a mirror and weld so the same on both sides that's geometry modified topology mirror and weld we'll hit crease poly group and we'll hit D and that'll kind of give us our eyeballs and now we can go through here and we can say you know what we're getting too much resolution in here so we can go through insert single edge loop pull down alt let's see if that rounds it out any better and these are a little bit fat so I'm gonna go through here and we're gonna find this surface normal direction and we'll scale that in a little bit but I want to keep that curvature here's what we're gonna do I'm going to hit W control tap this poly group here and then alt tap this back here so it's just going to move uh, that poly group Oh, you know what it's still gonna grab those corner edges here well it's not a huge deal we can always matchmaker that back if we need to uh, also we can turn on dynamic subdivisions for this thing just so we can see a little bit better representation of what it's gonna look like and they got the eyeballs here Let's go back to our reference hit uh, perspective still on and now these eyeballs should generally match up like so um, what else what else we got the feet on here these feet look a little bit big so I'm gonna go into solo mode here I'm gonna tap on the top here and then we can just scale in from the top and then that keyhole shape back here also let's go ahead and uh, smooth this one out um, this is a pretty basic shape here so I think what I can do is we can do a crease tolerance under the geometry crease menu and now we can do I grab all that yeah let's do a crease let's also if we do a crease level like three and a smooth subdiv of four, um, sometimes you can get some unwanted res uh, artifacting on the corners here. So I'm going to go into solo mode here and we can put in some control loops. Insert here and insert here. And you can even put some right in here if you need to. And now I tend to not want to do that, but now we can do like crease level of two, smooth subdiv of four. And that'll give us a very nice clean result. Let's do, let's, there we go, crease level of 2 is what I was looking for. There we go. Uh, we got that, we got that. Now we need the little key shape from the side. Uh, I don't have any really good reference of that, but I think we can kind of wing it here. We can bridge two cylinders together, or again, we can use Ziri Mesher to do the heavy lifting for us, or we can do, let's, let's, let's do live booleans. So, for example, um, let's do a mid cylinder here. What mass points? How are we doing on time? Okay. We got this one here, and I can control, drag out a copy here. And now we can, uh, I'm going to temporarily get rid of these. I'm going to put them back here when I mirror and weld. But for now, we can say bridge two polys. We can go here to here, here to here. I think that's the basic shape we're looking for. And now we can go, we can inset this. We can try even splitting this, but I think inset's going to be our better bet. Let's do a quick mirror and weld. And then we'll uh, group by normals, do another mirror and weld. And now this one here, I want to go ahead and just, oh, that was sloppy selection, sorry. Sometimes it might even be easier just to grab this and then hit Control W and then we can grab this one. Hit Control W or we can make these both one poly group here like this and it's kind of hard to tell those two apart. There we go. So now we can do uh, both of these at the same time. We can go inset poly group all. We can just pull this in. Uh, these things go in pretty far. In fact, even farther than I know it's going to let me. So we'll slide this a little bit more. Um, Although we do want to keep insetting this or they're both the same. So we'll inset again. Well, you know what? Actually, that is about the distance. I mean, you can, like, if you needed to, you could inset. And if it stopped, you can inset again. And then you could insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and get rid of this edge loop. But I think this is actually where I want to be. Uh, so now that we have both polygroups on both sides, Q mesh, polygroup ball, 
pull it straight through. Now, this key thing here is basically a cylinder. So we're going to do like a cylinder of 12 and we'll pull that right down the middle and we can, let's go ahead and split that off temporarily. And now we can do delete flat island and then we can do close convex hole and we can just kind of pull that out something like that. And now uh, we can go ahead and we can, let's do an insert single edge. We're going to hold that shape a little bit better here. And now we can, uh, if we need to, we can mask this and then we can pull this back in. Let's see how that looks. I guess that's about right. Move this in just a little bit. Something like that. And this looks a little bit thick. Let's scale this in just a little bit. Okay, so we've got that shape here. <clears throat> so for this one here, let's go ahead and do, let's just do a crease tolerance. We'll turn on dynamic, which we've talked about before. And these things, if they need to be held a little bit better, we can try dropping our crease tolerance down lower, but that might start grabbing some of these edges. In this case, it didn't, but you just manually go and increase those. And now we'll do a crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. See how that treats us. I think that'll work just fine. And then we've got this one. We'll go ahead and uh, crease dynamic. I think that'll work just fine. Let's scale this down just a tiny bit. Something like that. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Um, these eyes are kind of bothering me now that I see them. I think they are quite a bit off. Let's see if we can rectify that real quick. If we move this out, we got perspective turned on. Uh, our midline might be off for this guy. So it might need to be more positioned like this. And if you need to, if you do need to update your, where your movie is, you can go back up to the movie and show, pull this one off, tap it. And now you're right back where you started. And now you can, you know, go snap back to that camera view. Uh, that's probably a little bit more accurate. Let's hit D here. And again, those are a little bit bulbous. Let's go ahead and flatten those out just a little bit. And on this back end here, I'm going to say, oh, you know what? We were moving that around with uh, that masked. My mistake. But no big deal. We can just uh, go back to our camera view here. Match us up a little bit better. Hit D so we can make sure that when we subdivide, we're still maintaining that same mass. And then W, thin amount, we have X turned on, yes. We're playing it fast and loose, but that's okay. Also, if I wanna give it a little bit more wiggle room around here, I can do Q mesh, poly group all, and we can just build in a little edge here just to make sure we can put that on there. Just trying to make sure it's the same all the way around. Okay, so a little sloppy, but that's okay. So we got our little guy here. And let's go ahead and sub these up, subdivide these dynamically. Smooth subdiv of crease level two, smooth subdiv of three. I think that'll work. All right. Um, and then this guy here, we'll go ahead and dynamic smooth subdiv of one, crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two. I think that'll work. And you're also going to see, this is what I was talking about, the kind of artifacting from that polarized cap. You can mitigate that a little bit by inserting an edge loop to kind of contain those polygons there a little bit better. So I'll give you a much smoother result. There we go. Not too shabby. Okay. So I think we're good on this guy. Let's do one more. That'll work. Let's go ahead and save this. Um, a uh, bomb, um, I forget. Something like that. Um, yes, there will be there will be a video on demand if you wanted the link to that. Here's my Pavlovich workshop, so you can watch last week's. We went over some pretty cool stuff. Cool. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> and now my stream title has my name. Um, cool. Yeah. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in ZBrush. Hard surface modeling. You can do it in Max. You can do it in Maya. But 
I found that just staying in ZBrush and previewing it in ZBrush is so much faster and easier. It, there's some things it doesn't do quite as well, but there's always workarounds to those. And it also has stuff like the ZRemesher tricks and stuff like that, where it's just it, it, way easier. Uh, is there any material you recommend for me to learn how to model like that in ZBrush? <laughs> Thanks again, Thomas. Um, yeah, you can go to, there's a couple different places. So first one I'll shout out is the, um, Pixlogic website. So if you go to the Pixlogic ZBrush here, you can go through here and you can like learn ZBrush and there's free Z, uh, free Z classroom training. Um, if you're so inclined, you can go to my YouTube channel. And also, if you want to download these videos, you can too. If, if YouTube, if your internet connection is iffy, uh, you can go to playlist here and there's an intro to ZBrush part one, part two, and part three. And then if you wanted to learn the new ZBrush 4R8 stuff, you can go here. If you want to learn just the Z modeler functionality by itself, if you go to the intro to ZBrush part three, that's going to have all the Z modeler functionality. Uh, if you want to learn like custom hotkeys, custom interfaces, you can go to intro to ZBrush part two, and then the intro to ZBrush part one will get you up and running. Like what's navigation? What is uh, the document versus the tool? How do you sculpt? What's the vertice? That has all that information in there. So if you're just starting out, go to my intro to ZBrush part one. Uh, class somewhere in here. It's in my playlist. I seem like I'm going blind here. Is it part three? Part two? Intro to part one, right here. <laughs> so it's uh, 47 videos that'll get you up and running. I think it's like four hours long. Um, yeah, If and also if you want to, I'll link you to the playlist here. Um, if you want to, you can go to uh, my Gumroad or Cubush page and you can just download introduce part one and all any of these other videos that are on YouTube you can just download them there put them in your own little library cool yeah and another thing I do like about ZBrush specifically is I cannot live without polygroups you can do something like this in Maya like with selection sets but oh my god it's a nightmare to juggle those and in ZBrush you can do it with a lot of polygons so you're not really limited um, but polygroups, I live and die by polygroups now. I can't, I can't live without them. And you can constantly change them and um, do all sorts of cool stuff. While we're doing this, let's go ahead and really quickly, let's throw on like a basic material two. Let's go to our material properties here. Just really quick, just for some fun. Oh, you know what? I was going to do live Boolean on that one. That's okay. So basic material modifiers. Let's say our diffuse will crank that up. And if I want to get, if I want to sample some color, what I can do is one, one way to do it. Uh, you can sample from certain things, but I like to do, oh man, am I losing my brain? Here we go. Plain 3D, edit, make poly mesh 3D. We'll do subdivide this up and we'll go to Z. And you know what? This isn't the one I want. Let's go to texture, import. I want to grab... The one that's a little bit more hold on just a second where is this stuff coming from renders no okay, reference there we go and then view dang it texture import give me a second there we go so now we're at the one where he's throwing it and it's not a toy it's an actual render is the one I'm looking for. There it is. So we'll grab this one here, add it. And now, oh my God, that's not the one I want. That's the one I want. Okay. So we'll go ahead and, and big in this Z and we'll subdivide this plane one more time. And we will go into brush mode. I'm going to use this to sample color from. And then we can just say, uh, go out of edit mode. Uh, you can do a snapshot as well. And then we'll go back to what we were modeling on. So this one, uh, we can do MRGB. We'll crank that up and we'll hit C to sample from like the local color here. And we'll do fill. So the color, fill object. And then up here, 
We'll sample and fill here. We'll sample and fill. And then for those the dark area here, I can actually um, mask that. And then we can blur that mask, but it's already pretty low res, so I can just keep that. And now I can just fill that with, like, say, black. And uh, for this, oh, you know what? I thought we had that filled with a color. Let's try that again. Fill, and then that'll just be probably the same white. And then this will be... And then this will be... There we go. So he's going to be just kind of hanging out there. And he'll be being held in the air like that. So I can position the legs however I want. Um, have a little bit more fun with this guy. Let's see if we can we can clear our canvas now. We don't need that anymore. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I, if I want to paint a little bit better on this, say I want to put like a little red in here, I can do that. Um, but it's so low poly. If I do shifty, you're going to see that's the real geometry. So what I can do instead, if I want to say put an ember on the edge here, and I also want to give it emissive properties. I don't want to just paint it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn colorize off temporarily. You can hold down shift and turn everything off. And let's say I want to borrow uh, these polygons here. I'm going to duplicate this off. I mean, I can control drag this off too, but uh, let's also do a group by normals and we'll just do a delete hidden. And now we can do Q mesh polygraph ball and then Q mesh this out, hold down shift, and then we'll Q mesh this back. And then we'll do another crease, crease level of one. And you know, we'll create a dynamic so by this one. So now that can kind of hang out on the end there and I can give it like an emissive material. That should work okay. You know what, these eyes are still bugging me. I did a really terrible job on these eyes. I'm gonna scale them up just a little bit. Also, Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, so we've got all these different materials. I'm going to hold on shift and turn colorize back on. And then for this little ember up here, we can even choose the different material. So we can say uh, colorize glow, fill. And then on this one, we can crank up the ambient and the diffuse on, whoa. We had M turned on, but it's doing, oh, you know what? <laughs> for some reason, I forgot about this. When I have color fill object assigned to a hotkey, all it does is fill color for some reason. It doesn't fill material and color. So let's go through here. We'll turn on material. And so let's say we want to do this one a little bit more metallic. So we could say, you know what? We can make that gold or we can just do a general metal here. And then we'll go to color fill object. We'll just hit that fill object button. Fill object button. And then this one here, I think we can keep so we'll say that was, um, or you know what? That was basic material too, but I kind of like it better as that metal. So we we'll say, you know what? You get filled object here. Now this one could be more of a plasticky, so we'll go to basic material too. And we'll say color, fill object. And then this up here can be more metal. And then this one up here can be more plastic. And then this one here should be our ember here. That one should be the colorized glow. There we go. And then these feet down here should be plastic. Whew. Much better. So now if I want to select that material, I can just drag off and pick it. And then I can go through here and I can change the ambient and the diffuse curve and all that stuff. And then we can go through here, we can turn on perspective. We can turn our floor grid back on. He's kind of on his tippy toes, but that's okay. And that'll go ahead and catch our shadow. So we can do like a BPR render and uh, we can change some of these settings. So let's go to draw size and we'll say grid size. We'll crank that up. And then for our shadows and lighting, let's do some of that here. We can turn on lights. And we can say, I want this one. And let's also do maybe a fill light here. And we can change that light direction. So this one's selected. I'm going to change this to go here. And we can also change our, looks like I need to make that a little bit bigger. 
There we go. So now our floor will catch our shadow. Um, let's move that. Uh, 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 uh. Really? Oh, you know what? That might actually be the shadow. Yeah, that harsh cutoff is the key. Sorry about that. And then we can go in here and change our properties. So we can go to like render properties and we can say, let's do uh, shadows and we can do maybe, whoops, a little bit of, uh, we can do some sort of scattering if we want to, probably not on this guy. We can do a little bit of AO and then under our shadow properties here, we can say, let's blur those shadows out a little bit, but on our AO pass, we want to not blur out so much. There we go. So we can get a nice cute render in here. Uh, and also, if you're so inclined, let's do a render. Um, external render, we'll go into key shot real quick. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let me catch up here. Do you have a tutorial for polygroups? Uh, I can do one really quickly. Um, Predrag says, if people are coming from Max's ZBrush material ID equals polygroup. Um, yeah, let me do, I can do a quick uh, polygroup thing. Cool, thank you, Ox. So here, we'll talk a little bit about Keyshot and then we'll do, so here's a little Keyshot render. Um, we can change these materials if we need to. So we can just double click on these and we go to the material properties. You can just drag them from here. So on this, in the case of this like little metal thing back here, if we wanna go to turn that, it looks like kind of brassy. So we'll go to our metals here and we'll say brass rough. And we'll just drag that on. And then we can just drag this one on and then we can change the properties in here. So this is measured. I'm just gonna do it by color. Um, we can kind of dial in whatever color we want. I wonder if we can, can I pick from outside of, yes, I can. I'm going to uh, steal that local color. There we go. That's the color I'm looking for. So we can just use this in Keyshot to kind of give us the look we want. Instead of these um, feet down here, we can just look at their plastics real quick. So we'll go to plastic. Uh, we'll do hard, shiny plastic and play around with the roughness. We can start with red if we want to. And we can even rename this like feet. And then under this property, we'll go to the diffuse. And again, I'm just going to sample his little orange feet here, that local color. That's what I'm looking for. And if you want to change this roughness, uh, if it's too shiny, you can just dull that out just a bit, not that much. There we go. Um, yeah, let's keep doing that hard, shiny plastic for the white here. And then this is kind of metal as well. I don't know if I want to play with this. We can try anodized metal, maybe. If there's a cool blue. I don't like playing with these values too much, like a purplish blue that's kind of close to... Ooh, maybe not, a little too purple. We can play around with these values a little bit. We can put this a little bit more towards blue. So if we go in here to the, I think the film refractive index. Yeah, so we can just say, you know what? Just to get a little more blue and then the film coefficient. So that's really purple. Let's go to the other side. No, oh, maybe not. We'll say, okay, yeah, that's actually what I'm looking for. So I want the spec to not be super colorized, but then the color of that spec, I want to be a little bluer. That'll work. Uh, same thing for this one up here. Let's go ahead and do um, an anonized blue. That's brushed, brush, let's get out of there. Rough blue. So we can put this one on here and we're gonna change some of these properties here. So I'm gonna say, Yeah, much lighter blue. I think that'll work. And then for this one, let's do an emissive. We can actually do an area light too, if we want it to like light up our scene. So we can say, uh, let's make that like a red area light maybe. It's probably gonna do some weird stuff. It, it, probably a better um, choice is emissive. We'll do a warm emissive on that one. And then we'll say the color needs to be red. Maybe not that red. And I think we got everything. Okay, let's see, let's see. Uh, select objects. 
select parts of the material. Oh yeah, this wick thing here. You know what, we'll just go ahead and, we already have plastic white here. Um, the hard shiny white. I'm gonna drag another one because I wanna give it slightly different properties here. Or we can just drag this one over. That's a ZBrush mat. We can do hard shiny white on this one and then we can right click this one. Actually, you know what, let's double click this one. I wanna keep that poly paint on there. So I'm gonna change it in here to a plastic and then in the specular we can just make that a little bit lighter. The roughness is probably, we're going to crank up that roughness a bit on that one and we'll call this wick. Okay, I think that'll work. So we got our little guy here. Uh, let's go ahead and change his environment around a little bit. We can try maybe an interior lighting just to see if we can get some interesting reflections going on on him. Put him in a clothing store industrial kitchen or if you wanted to be more outside we can do like zbrush has some really good ones too we can like put them outside nice ambient setting here france put them in france there you go that's a nice sunny day and if you don't want to see this or if you want to change the environment settings you can also do a sun and sky but we'll say uh, we'll do a color but no, not a color background. So we're in the HDRI editor setting, so undo that. <laughs> On here, we can change the blur. So if you want to just blur the environment out, you can just kind of have them sitting there. Um, alternatively, you can also just go to settings and turn it to just a colored environment. Like so. Um, also, you might notice that as this is uh, resing in this subdivision on here wasn't quite enough. So what you can do instead of going back to ZBrush and subdividing and bringing it back in, what you can do is you can go if I think you can do this in all the versions. So we'll go to Edit Geometry here. Uh, actually, cancel that. Go to Scene, tap the geometry you want to edit, Edit Geometry, and we're going to smooth the normals on here. So we're going to Edit Normals. We're going to say uh, Calculate the Vertex Normals, and we're just going to smooth. Uh, these things. There you go. I think that did it. So now you won't get the slight artifacting on there and you don't have to go back. Uh, other cool thing here, if we go to materials, um, if we change our lighting to, let's go all the way up. So we're going to do some really intense lighting on here. You can make this like water or Chardonnay. And if we change this here to, there you go. So you can actually make him out of liquid. So it looks like he has a little metal plug into his little liquid body here. So that's really, you can do a lot of really cool quick stuff. And also you're going to see we're getting um, caustics and reflections and refractions and stuff all through that. Or instead of uh, liquid, we could do maybe glass. We can make him a glass one. That's solid glass. Let's say, you know what, let's undo that. And we'll do, so we like this one. Um, oh, it's been a while since I've done this. I think they changed it around on me a little bit. If we want to do add a model set, and we'll say this one's going to be um, test. So now we have uh, this test one. We have our default one. If we check this one on, our default one has our materials, I believe. And then if we check this one on, this is our test one. And now with this test one, selected we can go through here and we can say like what would it look like if i 3d printed this out and um i just wanted to let's uh, so go back to our lighting product render here and uh you know either there's a let's see it made it all plastic or if i wanted to make them all glass what would it look like if i you know got a little disney style glass blown thing here and now we're not getting that caustics anymore or the refraction through here. So we can go through here and we can say back to jewelry and that'll give us more accurate lighting. It's gonna take a little longer to render. Um, you're gonna see it's gonna take a while to kind of res in because it's having to do a lot of math, but it'll give you much more accurate shadows and stuff like that. Um, but if we go back to our scene here, we can say, let's go back to default. There we go. And now we get our default guy. So let's go ahead and say, uh, you know what I'm gonna have to do? Hmm. Let's go ahead and pause this and then we can go back to ZBrush. And we'll go back to our floor here. Oh, while I was rendering this, you may or may not know this. So render 
you can do render passes and now we have our shaded our depth our shadow our AO you can export all of these into Photoshop and you can actually do it with a plugin so you get a Z plugin here I think I have it hooked up let's see if I do let's see if we go to um, there we go. First of Photoshop. Uh, if you click on here, it'll walk you through um, videos and what it actually does. So we can go uh, send to Photoshop. And let's see. It yelled at me about something. Oh. Uh, oh, you know what? With that on, maybe I need to do render. I think I may have had... Um, it may be trying to go through key shot instead of going to ZBrush when I because I had the render turned on to go to key shot. <coughs> so I think that's that's what I was doing. So don't have key shot uh, as your render while you're doing this. Looks like it's still going. And this is saving out render passes. Yeah, I know. I know. I guess we can unpause that. Or it is unpause. And you can do that all manually as well. Now it's going to open up Photoshop, and then uh, you'll have a little Photoshop document in there. Uh, Ox says, I like the key shot dark interface setting better. It lets you make better color decisions. I agree with that. Um, let's see if we go to that preferences, interface. Um, 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 um. Maybe not. Where is that at? General. I'm not sure where that is. I'll have to look that up. But color management? No. Somewhere in here, going to the view. Well, I looked where I thought it would be. Um, theme under interface. So edit, preferences, interface, theme there it is thank you uh, thank you ox and then uh, we can do a dark theme and then it can change all that stuff I suppose we'll go and save that ah oh, look how nice that is um, let's see I actually moved key shot around so it probably doesn't look very good uh, uh, there we go ah very nice so uh, we're now we're in Photoshop here let me move this into place sorry guys so now we have uh, all of these different render passes in here, so you can play around with uh, the different lights that you can add. So you've got a rim light here, and you can add all sorts of stuff in here. You've got a depth pass here, and yeah, go through here and modify this thing to your heart's content. I'm a little bit lost in that file setup. Oh, you know what else? Uh, let's grab this one here. This is having some artifacting as well, so we're going to do another edit. Um, edit geometry and we're going to do edit normals and we'll calculate those vertex normals and we'll apply there we go smooth those out cool um how are we doing on time we got about 20 minutes left anything else you guys want to go over before i have to head out 38 40 yeah we got this guy i can i can put him in a scene now so i do have my uh bowser little bowser jr dude so we can say, if I want to, I can take this guy here. I did save this, right? Hold on. View. Details. Yeah. Uh, so for example, I can do a quick, uh, and now this is going to destroy, it's not going to destroy, it's going to make them all use one dynamic subdivision. So I've had different ones if you want to. You can go to the Z plugin here, and it's called Clean Tool Master, and you can convert your dynamic subdivisions to actual subdivisions if you want to. Um, in this case, I'm not going to bother because I can reset those up later. So I'm just going to do a merge uh, all. So I'll merge visible. And now he's going to hang out all merged up, and then I can make him into a brush. Brush, create, insert, mesh, new. And then we'll go over here to our Bowser guy. And we can say if you're going to be held in Bowser's hand. Let's go ahead and split mass points here. We just need one of them. Delete hidden. There we go. And now uh, his little 
you know, we can pose. Well, maybe next time we'll pose Bowser out, and uh, we'll put him in like a little Mario scene. We've we've been making these guys for a while, so you can you can do that. And then these you also make sure these things are to scale. So if you do have reference, which we kind of do, we can go okay. Uh, if he is say, let's turn on perspective here. Let's say he is about this big than our, but he's, this is also closer to us in the view. So he's actually over here, like above his head here. Let's go to the center here. And this is going to be just quick and dirty. So bear with me. Oops. Right. We don't have this saved. So he'll be hereabouts. And then this guy be here and you can also use the scale of the hand to kind of determine size as well uh, but something like this maybe um let's see uh bland is that what you uh, dropped on twitch watching doing my bike pav cool oh man it was like a year ago already jeez well thanks for continuing to stop by hopefully i haven't been too boring over that year i think i have if I go back and watch my videos, I'm like, ah, I, I don't have any, I don't have usually have a lot of stuff prepared. So hopefully me winging it. I, you know what I would like to do as a new year's resolution a couple months too late is to try and set up some sort of, not a curriculum, but just like, I don't know, first Tuesday of the month, I'm going to go do this and I'll have something to do as opposed to just kind of showing up and doing something. Um, Mentor asks, uh, I want to ask, what is the term real-time rendering? Does that mean no compositing? Um, you can composite on the fly in real-time rendering. Basically, generally speaking, I think real-time rendering is more about can it run? Like a real-time rendering would be like a video game or Unreal Engine where it's not about sending it to a render farm and having it crunch and res in and then save that frame off. That would be um, rendering... Uh, like, you know, using a render farm to render as opposed to just having the object render in real time, which in this case would be if we had um, just like reflective red. So this is real time. It's you can see the material on the updating on the fly. Um, you can go up here. Let's change that to like viewer material here. Uh, let's do like a jelly bean. And then we can go over here to our light and we can say uh, we can change our light around and you're going to see it's updating in real time you're not having to send those instructions to the CPU and then sit there and have it crunch that math for you. Um, if you, oh, you know what we can talk about just real quick. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, there is a thing we did, uh, Pablo Munoz Gomez, uh, zbrushguides.com. We did a stylized rendering. I always like to do this if we're just doing uh, rendering in ZBrush because it's so fun to do. Here it is, stylized rendering, geez. I can link you guys to this. If you want to walk through how matte caps and materials work in ZBrush, you can check that out. And basically, long story short, um, you can very quickly, let's just grab a material we're probably not going to use that much. Uh, green metallic's a nice one. I like that one. Let's do, uh, let's reflect yellow. So if I go here, I hit my comma key. We have material set up here for comic style rendering. So I can take Poblander's super comic style renderer and we can play around with some of these settings here. This is my favorite one just because it very quickly gives me like an ink drawing um, look. So I can go through here and I can even, um, oh, whoops, we, had, we still have Keyshot running. And that's fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll just let BPR render this out. And under render, I'm going to turn off Keyshot. So um, you can go through here and do a comic style render. And these also has, and he'll, he'll walk you through, I walk you through his PDF to do this, but you can do like a Batman style uh render look let's see it seems like let me crank up uh you know and these are matte caps too so it's probably this isn't going to have a whole lot of effect is it duh um let's play around with this one i like this one here so this will give you kind of an ink drawing kind of look and you can go through here and we can change some of these settings here for like orientation to kind of change the lighting around and you can also make your own matte caps so it'll give you a cool look and then you can go through here and you can BPR render and that'll give you nice alias lines and then you can export this into Photoshop or whatever and you can make it look like you did a an ink drawing you can also go in here let's see if I remember how to do this it's 
been a while. Render um, mm -mm -mm, filters. So you can turn on filters. So you can say, okay, turn this one on, and this one is going to add noise to your scene. We can maybe do, you know, blur, and then you can go down here to the blur effect, and you can crank that up or crank that down. Yeah, so you can, you can do an inverse blur, which is kind of a sharpen, or you can crank, crank that up and you can do a blur. Um, you can also do, like, maybe a posterize. So if you want to, on top of this, posterize the material even more, you can simplify this out. There we go. So give it even more of a stylized look. You can go in here and you can posterize in, in a filter. It's kind of fun to play around with this stuff. And you can also drop the opacity of the posterize. You can kind of blend those. You can also use blend modes to blend between these two filters. So if you want to do um, a slight posterize with another filter, uh, you know, blur. And then this one is sharpen, so you can blur and then sharpen, and then you can add a, a screen mode and then blend those all together using whatever you want. So it's kind of like Photoshop filter stuff within ZBrush itself. And that's all uh, real time as well. So, But you have to be in BPR mode in order for that stuff to show up if you're not in that. Now you can just update those on the fly. Or not. Kind of up to you. Uh, what's the best way, uh, Tim Dan says, what's the best way to clean up messy Boolean geo and create low res meshes while maintaining all the detail? Um, the best way kind of depends on the object. If you go, I think I talked a little bit about that in the Zebras 4.8, what's new here. We can, we can do, um, maybe a couple examples of this. Mesh fusion is another good one we can talk about. Um, I'm trying to remember where it is in here. I think it's like live Boolean cleanup, compound live Boolean. Well, let's just talk about it. So, um, and again, I don't know if there's like a best way. We've done this, we've done similar stuff to this before. So, for example, let's say we do sphere and if you haven't used live booleans definitely check them out they're really cool so for example we can go here let's go brush insert live boolean here and depending on how complex it is it might it might be really tough if it is something simpler like <clears throat> a cylinder here oh you know what let's turn that picker uh, uh continuous rotation there we go. Uh, split mass points, and then we can do a bevel, edge loop complete, and then we can do a crease, crease polygroup, smooth sub to, uh, you know what, we'll keep that creased up. So let's move it to three. So we can push this in here, and now in order for this to become a live boolean, I'm going to make that subtractive. We can turn on our live boolean here, and now this thing is going to automatically just go through here, and you can make copies of this, or now that this is subtractive, you can do more fancy stuff like grab maybe one of these things. You can pull this through and then you can, or if you don't like that one, you can hit W and you can cycle through these different ones and see if there's another effect of the live Boolean that you like more. Well, I like that one. So let's say we like this one. So let's go ahead and say, uh -uh, I want to make this into a real mesh. So I can go through here and with these two showing, we can go down here to Boolean, turn on dynamic subdivision. Let's turn on dynamic subdivision up one. For that one there and then we'll say dynamic subdivision on oops on make boolean mesh so there's our union mesh here so now how do we game res this <clears throat> so what i would probably do in a production setting is if i'm just doing like little booleans that aren't changing the overall surface i would say go back to my original working file and just use this sphere as my game res uh, but over here that's not going to work so well so in this instance, um, did I not have dynamic? Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. So in this instance, what you could try and do is Z remesh with groups turned on. And then, you know, if I want to just Z remesh over this, I really don't care about that detail over here. Um, ooh, that's a tough one. This one I can fix. This one, not so much. Let's do this. Let's say I want to grab this one and then all of these groups here and make this all one poly group. And now I can do... Uh, keep groups, because I don't care about this detail over here. That's just, it's not changing the surface, but this one is. Uh, keep groups, and then we can do Z remesh, target by polygon count of five. And let's see what this does. 
this is kind of a, a tough example. And you can always resurface this manually later. Let's do half. There we go. So that'll just be whatever it is, the game res. And then over here, you have those edges built in. If you want to clean this up a little bit, we can do like insert single edge loop. We can say U. Just go straight in. And then this thing can just be a cap. So I'm going to invert that. We'll delete hidden. And then we'll just do a close convex hole. And it looks like it had a little bit of a hiccup over here. So we need to go through here and we'll just collapse this back real quick. Collapse edge. There we go. So now we have kind of a game res, as it were. Give that a shot, maybe. Um, oh, and if you wanted to maintain all the detail, you would just <laughs> do all the, everything I did, but just zero mesh at a very high resolution. Um, you could also use DynaMesh if you wanted to. Uh, that'll create an envelope for your meshes. Kind of depends on what you mean by clean up and what you what you want to uh, accomplish there. Uh, with zebra scores are a way I can use fast retopology of my sculpt. I know the full version has one where you can draw what direction you want the new topology, but I can't afford that at the moment. Ooh, you know, this is going to sound really bad. I don't use ZBrush Core. I did do <laughs> an intro to ZBrush Core. I basically went through the ZBrush Core manual and I'm like, oh. I can do this real quick. So I did uh, a video series. There's 47 videos in here of all the functionality of ZBrush Core as far as I know. So you can check that out. Um, but off the top of my head, I'm really bad at troubleshooting in ZBrush Core because I don't remember what's in it. Like I did it once and I vaguely remember how it goes, but I don't remember what is in ZBrush Core and what is and I don't use it enough. Um, trying to think if they have anybody on their Pixelogic workshop that, has, uh, that uses ZBrush Core uh, if anybody knows, shout it out. That uses it more consistently than I do. They also probably have ZBrush Core videos you can watch in here. Um, but somebody in here might be more of a ZBrush Core person. I think maybe Shane Olson I might have done some ZBrush Core stuff, if I remember correctly, for the Pixelogic channel. But um, that one, yeah, topology, I, I'm going to just guess that it doesn't. Uh, I think ZBrush Core is more about how to do... Uh, a little bit more concise, simple, sculptory, 3D printy tasks, and not so much. As soon as you get into topology and worrying about vertices, it starts becoming more um, process. It starts becoming more development. It starts becoming more 3D CG. And I think they kind of shy away from that in ZBrush Core and try to keep it as simple as possible, which on one hand is really good because it's a cheap, cheaper version that if you just want to do simple stuff, you have, a bit of, have it available. But on the other hand, you know, you are missing out on some functionality. So I wish I had a better answer for you. I don't really not sure, but. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything here? I'm probably going to head out. Yeah, yeah, so Zebra, yeah, apparently ZBrush Core doesn't have Zero Mesher. And if you don't use Zero Mesher a lot, the ZBrush Core might be fine. I'm not, I don't even think it has retopology, I don't think, or it had my, I think it made us have these spheres. I'm sorry. I really don't remember. I am really dumb when it comes to ZBrush Core, but I did do videos on it. So if you want to watch me learn ZBrush Core really quickly, do videos and then completely forget everything, um, you can certainly do that. Uh, okay. Well, I think I'm about done here. So thanks everybody for stopping by. Um, I think I'm not going to be here next week on this channel. But um, I'll let you guys know, or the, you go to um, go to their zbrushlive.com, and I think that'll take you through. There we go. Here's all the. Hey, I'm on now. Uh, this will take you through everybody's schedule and stuff like that. So, um, hey, there's a Mario. You know what? I should take Solomon's Mario's and add them to mine. I'm gonna steal them from him. All right, everybody. Cool. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. I'm going to head out. And y'all have a good, uh, good rest of your day, good rest of your week, good rest of your life.